And welcome back. And we are now at part three of this week's New Comics Bitches! <laughs> no, um, okay. So, uh, kind of continuing with that thread that we just left off with in part two, uh, we're going to talk about uh, another big contender for this week's uh, Book of the Week. Um, and that is uh, The Boys uh, Butcher Baker Candlestick Maker number five. Um, uh, where it basically, you know, uh, the events of the last issue, and I th if it wasn't book of the week, it was damn close. The last issue was, um, where we have, a v you know, it, you know, Billy is definitely, uh, recovering from the trauma of his wife dying and her baby, uh, killing her and him killing the baby. And then, of course, you know, some slimy piece of shit from Vought American comes in, basically offers him a deal, and he puts the fucking guy's eyes out. Um, and that's where we meet, or where Billy meets uh, Colonel Mallory for the first time. Is that, you know, Mallory comes in, basically is like, you know, people usually just kind of take the money and run when they deal with this thing, with these type of things, but you put the fucking guy's eyes out. So, um, despite the, I mean, admittedly horrific violence that is in this issue that comes at the end, uh, which is basically helps to define basically what has, you know, what Ennis has turned, you know, has turned Billy, you know, or what Billy has turned into. Uh, by now, that he is, you know, he's not, you know, he's he's lost his, you know, any of his real uh, love for, you know, any of his kind of respect for humanity, um, to him, you know, and you know, and especially the soups. But I mean, the people that surround the soups peripherally are also in his gun sights, and he doesn't care. I mean, it's just, you know, to him, this is not. You know, this is no longer about, you know, he's no longer just a soldier. He is a man who is, you know, very, very bent on revenge. But where this where, where this issue really shines and it really kind of crushes you uh, is when he uh, re is reading uh, his wife's diary, her, her secret diary, and where she basically tells the tale of uh, how Homelander raped her. Um, you know, and Billy, by the end of this issue, he's really crossed the line here. Um, and, uh, you know, Ennis doesn't, he doesn't make any bones about it. I mean, we're not to, you know, we're not to say or necessarily to think that this, you know, that he's made Billy evil by the fact that he's essentially, he's killed innocent people now. Um, but that he was given a mission by Mallory, he executed it. He did it. You know, he, Mallory said, go in, kill everybody. And he did exactly that. And it was horrifying, and it was hard to read. Um, because you want to continue feeling uh, that Billy is kind of worth saving. You know, that there's something in him, there's something human that is still going to be in him. And ultimately there is, but it's buried, buried very far underneath a lot of bloodshed. Uh, and the interesting thing about this, and also with uh, the other kind of, uh, uh, not with not so much, not at all really with Herogasm, but with Highland Laddie, when it was the story of uh, Wee Huey, um, uh, back in Scotland, you know, this is a much more personal tale, and, you know, it's, it's boys in name, it's the boys in name only. The, the tonal shift of this book, as it did with Highland Lat, is, is, you know, has nothing to do with the boys as a whole. I mean, the boys is, you know, for the most part, is pretty damn irreverent, you know, it's very perverse, it's very, uh, you know, twisted, and violent and horrific and but it still managed to be funny you know a lot of the time but there's there's no funny to be found at all in in this issue or in the last issue i mean it's just it's just horror you know it's just terrible you know from you know from beginning to end uh, so 
uh, moving along here. Um, that's from last week, isn't it? Um, so let's go to uh, okay, The Incredible Hulk, number two. Um, again, you know, we've got a problem here with uh, you know. It's, not only is, is Mark Silvestri working on this, but we've also got uh, Will, Sp uh, Will Sportasio uh, doing some art uh, on this uh, particular issue. Um, and that's like, you know, it's just like more of like the, you know, like the image crowd, you know, kind of showing themselves. And, you know, where we had, you know, where we kind of ended up in the last issue, I mean, you know, first of all, I really 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 don't care for the way that uh, uh, he draws Bruce Banner Bruce Banner is way too much of a stud in in these issues um, so I just don't like the way that he looks you know it's like he's kind of you know he's he's not just skinny he's very well defined you know it's like Bruce Banner is supposed to be you know he's kind of tiny but he's still got you know like kind of like almost super heroic shoulders and everything like that so that you know to this you know it, it kind of takes some points off um, but we're really seeing uh, where Bruce Banner is actually he's falling apart you, you know everything about him you know it's like that's what we learned basically at the end of the last issue that the real villain here uh, seems to be Bruce Banner um, and what he's trying to do is he wants the Hulk back inside of him. Not this, not this Hulk. He needs a Hulk in him. That's basically what is required of him. Uh, and so, I mean, Jason Aaron does a great job of writing this issue. Um, but the, you know, and, you know, really characterizing the, uh, you know, this kind of assist team that the Hulk has with, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, with uh, Andrea Van, uh, Von Doom and, uh, you know, Mr. Gore and, you know, Brain and everything like that. You know, it's just, uh, it's, you know, and the, basically their, their whole existence is they're a kill team for mad scientists. That's what they do. They basically just go around the world killing mad scientists before they can, you know, which is what they're doing here, is they want to kill Banner. Because Banner has gone, as she says, you know, he's gone totally Dr. Moreau. Uh, is that he's creating all of these, you know, horrific experiments. And, you know, Hulk does not want to be involved. He just wants to go back to the Moloids and just forget about it. He wants to be completely separate from humanity. He wants nothing to do with anything that they that they're doing. And of course, you know, this issue sets up how he's going to come back into the fold. So again, you know, what we have here is, you know, it's a war between, you know, it's it's now an external war between Bruce Banner and the Hulk. And this time the Hulk is someone that seems to be I can, he's the hero here, and Bruce Banner's the villain. So, I mean, uh, whether or not this fits up with canon, it almost doesn't matter, because Hulk is somebody I've never really been a huge fan of anyway. Uh, so, whether or not this is exactly how the Hulk should always be, you know, you know that the Hulk should, you know, that Bruce Banner should always be the smart guy who's, you know, always doing, you know, kind of like good things and so on and so forth. No, he doesn't always have to be that. Characters can evolve, and sometimes they evolve into bad things. And that's what Jason Aaron's doing here, and he's doing a great job with it. Um, so, I mean, for the writing, I would give this four and a half out of five. For the art, I would give this maybe a, a two and a half out of five. So we're going to kind of split the difference here, and we're going to say it's three and a half out of five. Um, Okay, so uh, we've got um, Ultimate X Men number three. First of all, uh, you know, again, uh, not to sound like a broken record here, but uh, Kara Andrews uh, covers of this, uh, you know, of everything that he's, you know, basically doing all the covers for the Ultimate Universe right now are just absolutely mind blowing. They're fantastic. I love them. Um, and I've uh, got, you know, uh, 
uh, you know, so we got Nick Spencer writing the living shit out of this. And what's what actually works about the this new Ultimate Comics X Men uh, is that because they don't have real guidance here, um, there is no Professor X, there is no Magneto, um, they're dead. Uh, there's no you know, there's no Wolverine, there's no Cyclops, and there's no, you know, there's no Logan, or there's no, uh, you know, uh, God damn it, uh, James Howlett. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just racking my brain trying to think of his real name. Um, you know, that there are no kind of senior staff members anymore. It's basically up to, you know, these four kids, uh, you know, Basically, you know, and they are, they're kind of reshaping the movement here, you know, with Rogue and with, uh, you know, and with Kitty and with Bobby and with uh, uh, Johnny Storm and, you know, now the kind of the young uh, Wolverine, I can never remember his name. And by God, I want, I want, uh, I love the scene uh, between, um, you know, uh, between Val, uh, between uh, Val Cooper and uh, and Quicksilver, and I just want everyone to slap the shit out of Quicksilver because he's just you know he is an uber scumbag. Um, and uh, but you know even worse, you know you have a horrifically psychotic lunatic madman here uh, in you know in uh, this in you know the younger Striker. Um, and he really wants people, everybody, to to pay, and you know, so having you know, a religious fanatic lunatic uh, is you know it's pretty extreme, um, and you know it's definitely kind of playing off you know the uh, you know God loves man kills as I think I mentioned in the last issue, uh, you know the the Claremont's uh, God loves man kills uh, little mini series. Um, where you have a religious fanatic who's looking to wipe uh, mutants off the face of the planet because they are an affront to God. Um, so it's, um, again, you know, where Spencer's strengths really lie with this issue is in writing, you know, is not only just doing dialogue, but also plotting and and giving these kids really strong and specific voices um, and you know you know making them seem like they're, they're kind of like the last hope you know and you know and like I said not having any external guidance is what actually makes this book really strong it makes it much different a much different experience and makes it a really strong experience so um, you know, I love where Nick's, where Nick's going with this. This is, again, you know, was kind of a contender. This is a four out of five, kind of leaning more towards four and a half. Um, but just, you know, really, really solid stuff, again, from from Nick and crew. And, you know, to Paco Medina, I think, who's doing art. And his art is lovely. Um, so, Yeah. Okay, so stick around. Uh, we're going to come back because we've got more to talk about still. We've got a lot more to talk about. Um, so stick around. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back.